I'm a big believer that uh, if you want to make it to the top, you got to get in the two percentile of whatever you do. Today, we're going to be looking into the dark side of college football. I'm going to be having a conversation with Arthur Terrence Wood. Terrence wrote the book Before You Go Pro, and he's discussing the story within the million dollar industry of college and professional football. Now, Terrence has a background because he comes from the business of football. You see, from the moment his grandfather was inducted to the NFL Hall of Fame, Terrence was on a tenacious mission to follow in his grandfather's footsteps of playing in the NFL. But as you know, with every dream comes triumphs and challenges, successes and failures. And in this conversation, Terrence is going to go behind the curtain and share what he experienced. And now him being a coach, being a mentor and working with student athletes, helping them be successful at the collegiate and getting to the pro level, you're going to gain some tremendous insight and gems from this episode. Terrence speaks directly to the athlete who wants to play big time college or professional football one day. But if you've never been there, you don't have family that's that's been there before, you don't have a mentor that's been there, you're going to be naive to the business of the sport. If you want to play football, know someone who plays or coaches football, or you just love the game, this is going to be a great listen for you. Stay tuned for our conversation. Um, as you mentioned before, uh, the author, Before You Go Pro, I also run a uh, mentoring coaching company for young football players, also named Before You Go Pro. Uh, I'm a Bay Area guy, so grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, football family. My father played uh, uh, college ball at San Francisco State, had a, a cup of tea in the USFL League. My grandfather uh, played at USC and then went on to the National Football League, uh, played years ago uh, under Vince Lombardi, and then ended up becoming an NFL Hall of Famer. And I was fortunate enough to, to play at the University of Colorado, win a Big 12 championship at the University of Colorado in 2001. And then after that, uh, played some pro ball in Canada and then the Arena Football League. Um, since then, been become a coach and an entrepreneur, and uh, I'm a family guy. Deshaun got four little ones at home, so uh, right. it's been a busy, busy roller coaster ride. But but uh, it's been fun, definitely. Right, I I'll tell you, man. Uh, what attracted me to your book is just you covering the business of college football and me training a lot of middle school and high school athletes and watching those kids go off to college. You really deepen my insight on the recruiting process. Yeah, it, and and it exactly what you just said. It's a process, and I think that's where a lot of athletes and a lot of parents uh, fail to to get things done, and and maybe they're a little. Um, undereducated as far as the process. So I just wanted to uncover some of the things that I saw in my career and then also with working with young football players myself, I wanted to educate uh, because I think they're under underserved as far as the business of football, whether it's recruiting, whether it's uh, how to leverage relationships, whether it's uh, you know moving on and transitioning out, out of football when their career is over, um, there was so many learning points and teaching points that I felt uh, went missed, not only in my career, but in the career of others. So if, uh, if somebody else isn't going to do it, then you should do it yourself. And that's how we came up with the book and the business. I, I, I like it a lot, man. And what, what gravitated me towards it was just me working in the fitness industry, industry for years. It's, it's all about sales. So I know when the kids go on these recruiting trips, you know, they're selling them to come to that university. So they're selling them with the fancy facilities. They're selling them with the new stadiums, having six different types of uniforms and things like that. And I see things can go awry if they don't ask the tough questions. And that's what I like about your material. Do you care to expand on that? Definitely. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's a lot of smoke and mirrors as we like to call it. 
and, and sometimes kids can get distracted, parents can get distracted on what really matters when you're making a decision that is a, a six-figure decision in, in some cases. And, and, you know, where guys end up going to college, a lot of times they end up spending the rest of their lives there. There are a lot of guys that I played with at the University of Colorado that work from Colorado that are doing amazing things. You know, we say it's a two year or four year or five year decision, but for a lot of guys, it's a lifetime decision. I, I met my wife right. when, I went off, when I went off college, you know, so, uh, and had our first child. So, uh, you know, it's a big decision. It's not the be all end all, but you deserve as a player, you deserve as a parent to be educated so that you can make the met the work the most excuse me uh well informed decision possible and there are a lot of factors that go into it and and the, the higher level that you play you know some of these kids playing at these division 1a schools like in Alabama or like a university of texas right we just really wanted to come from a, a stance with our company once again of education so that a parent or an athlete could say they didn't know or that they felt like they were bamboozled or they felt like they made the wrong decision because of lack of information. We wanted to, to limit that as much as possible. I agree. I see it happen all the time, man, where kids get excited to get a division one offer, go on different recruiting visits, and then they sign with the school off, off the bling and the glamour of the school. And then they get there and find out that it's not a right fit or they might be a defensive specialist and then they get switched to playing tight end or going from tight end to defense and then they're unhappy and then they can't figure out a way to get out of that or they wind up depressed. And you see it happen all the time, kids. They start drinking, then they start partying, then they get in trouble because then they're all focused and they've lost track of their goals. And to a certain extent, you know, I think everything that we do um, comes from past history. And, and with my own career, you know, I went, uh, to the University of Colorado was recruited by Rick Neuheisel. Yep. He only was there uh, up until my redshirt freshman year, and I played the majority of my career under a man by the name of Gary Barnett, who right. was a totally different style coach than, than the <laughs> one I originally signed up for. You know, and, and uh, what, what the, the athletes have to realize, and these parents, especially if you're going to a big school, is that, you know, these coaches, Coaches have aspirations as well, uh, where where they want to go off and maybe they get an offer at a bigger school or or there's more money over here. And then also at these big schools, the the ramifications if they lose and if there's too many losing seasons can can be drastic. And and uh, alumni and and uh, kids at the school they want a new coach, but what about the athlete that 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 coach recruited? Is he going to be okay if if that coach leaves? And a lot of times the answer is no. So what we want to do is once again help help families make the most well educated decision possible with the information that they have at that time. There are things that take place that are out of their control, and maybe they do end up transferring. But I think if we slow down earlier in the process and we teach what to look for, um, whether that coach leaves or, or, or doesn't, uh, the, the player will be in a better position and will enjoy the experience more if the due diligence happens on the front end. I agree, man. One thing I learned out of your book is like how you mentioned that players should talk to not just their host, but like the second stringer or the third stringer, the guy that you might, they might say something different as far as like this university being, being like all everything. That was a big takeaway for me out of your book and information that I shared with some of my athletes going on recruiting visits last season. No, that that's a great point. And, uh, you know, cause here's the thing. When they come recruit you, Deshaun, if they come out to a, a De La Salle High School or IMG in Florida and they come out and recruit you, a smart recruiter is going to talk to people all around that high school or that junior college. I've heard some recruiters say they've even talked to janitors 
yes, about sir. some prospects that they're looking at. So if they're going to do their due diligence and talk to the person that may get to see the real you, the person that you're not trying to impress, then, then you should do the same thing as a recruit. When you go on that trip, you know, talk to the guy that isn't getting that much playing time. And, and if he says, hey, you know, I'm not playing much, but these coaches, they'll give you a fair shot or, or there's some stand-up people, you know, then you can take it for what it's worth because he doesn't necessarily have to speak the company line. But if, if he's saying, hey, you know, I might be transferring out of here. They told me this, and and, and now this is the situation, and and, and it's real. Uh, it's a it's not a great place to be as far as uh, energy and and camaraderie. Then then that's also something you should take to account as a recruit. I agree. That's powerful. If you're in my audience and you're listening to this, guys, remember when you go on your visit, it's not just about talking to the starters or your hosts. Talk to some of the guys that's on a scout team. Talk to some of the juniors and seniors that might be second and third team and figure out why that is and listen to their story. Terrence, you mentioned, yep, great. I know you have certain blueprints for success and things or people that athletes can model and sacrifices that individuals have to make. And then the importance of having a support team. Would you care to elaborate? Yes, definitely. You know, I'm I'm a big believer in and you don't have to do it alone. That's part of the reason why we, we set up the Before You Go Pro Network is I wanted to uh, get former and current players, coaches, business professionals um, involved where, where, you know, it's people who have been there and done that and, and can help guide a young man that's really serious about the journey. So, you know, I'm a real big believer that uh, successful people, they leave behind breadcrumbs, they leave behind clues. Yes. And, and we don't have to re we don't have to recreate the wheel. You know, so if, if there's somebody that's at your school that is being recruited, if maybe your coach has played college ball at, at some level, uh, you know, you got a family member, a, a, a sibling, you know, somebody that has done it before, you need to reach out to those people, or reach out to organizations that have people that can help you out because there, there's a blueprint you can follow. And, and with, with all of these athletes, you know, it's really not hard to follow a general timeline on when things should take place as far as recruiting. And, right. and what's, what, what that's going to do for you is it's going to give you a heads up if you're off track, you know. So if, if uh, you're not getting any type of calls from colleges and it's the summer heading into your senior year, well, then you know you have to get proactive. Right. Because um, for whatever reason, your phone isn't ringing. Now, a lot of kids and, and parents will wait until the season. They'll wait till after the season to try to pick up recruiting. And, and today's recruiting world is too late. But that is a process. It's a relationship. It takes time. So if you're not hearing from coaches at a certain point in time, that's a red flag. If you haven't taken an SAT or an ACT um, at, at, at a, by, you know, your junior year, after your football season, junior year, then you're on the late train. You know, right. if you haven't done a, a pre-SAT, ACT, by the end of your sophomore year, then you're on the late train. You know, so um, follow the blueprint, follow what others have done that have um, had success. You've got some families where they've had multiple kids get scholarships. Right. Talk to those families you know, and, and figure out what's going on. So it, it's a lot of these uh, parents might not have experience, but somebody that does have experience isn't far away. So you need to find those people. Yes, I agree, man. And again, like the information in your book is what attracted me to it because I see we have a lot of similarities and I had a lot of failures. I played small college football at Portland State and later transferred to Western Oregon where it was a disaster yeah. playing for a different coach. The guy that recruited me out of Western Oregon, they knew I wasn't coming there, but they said, man, if something happens, you always got a home here. So after I left Portland State, I thought that the new coaches would have the same like welcoming attitude. And the fact is that they didn't. And I literally struggled there the whole time. 
I agree. I probably could have been successful if I had more of my personal constraints in control at that time. But I think exactly what you're talking about is right on point as far as having somebody to talk to that has been there. And that's what I was lacking as far as having success on the field. I was fortunate enough to graduate. So that was a big, you know, I can pat myself on the back for that. But there was more that I wanted to do. And because I didn't, it did lead me to playing semi-pro football football and later some indoor football. I might even know somebody that, you know, I played with the brother Elton Davis. Does that ring a bell? Played at Colorado. That's the corner. Yes, definitely. That uh, Elton's a a Buffalo brother of mine. He was a senior and at CU when I came in as a freshman. So I'm very, uh, very familiar and and got love for for Elton Davis. Definitely. I played with him out in Billings, Montana, man, with the Billings Thunderbolts at the nice. time in 2000. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my guy. Yeah, yeah. He was a tricky corner, man. He had tricks. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, you know, that, that, that's a good way to put it. Elton, uh, you know, where, where maybe he lacked in some areas as far as athletic ability, he was very savvy, smart corner. Yeah. So, listen – you some of your other top topics you mentioned NCA recruiting what are the rules what does a, an athlete have to have in place and like how do they know that they're on track what would you say to those football athletes that are going through the recruiting process right now or getting ready to get into it so obviously you have to be NCAA clearinghouse eligible to receive a scholarship you can see the breakdown of what you need to have in place academically to be awarded a scholarship. You know, there's a certain number of core courses that you have to take. And when I say core courses, we're talking about academics. We're talking English, math, social studies, foreign language, you know, PE, home ec. So you have to have the right things in place for a college to give you the money. It's, it's more than just your recruiting film. And, and that's what we're talking about is, you know, I, I went out and I talked to an audience of student athletes once. Okay. And I asked, and, and I told them, you know, this was right after we, we had written the book, Before You Go Pro. And I said, I'm going to give away a free book for whoever knows how many recruiting trips how many official recruiting trips uh, a prospect can take. And all these hands shot up in the air, and it took maybe about four or five guesses for somebody to get it right. And I'm a big believer that if you really want something, you know what it takes, you know what's involved with it, you know who to talk to, you're seeking the proper information so that you can achieve that goal. And for for me to be sitting in a room full of uh, so-called student athletes that want to go to college and they don't even know how many official visits they can take, that was a a brain teaser for me. That was a head scratcher for me, you know. Um, And and so know your stuff, you know. And, And the good thing about today's day and age is we have so much information at the access of our fingertips. So there, there really is no excuse not to know what my GPA has to be for me to receive a scholarship. Um, the rules as far as when schools can call me and when they can't call me. What are the rules as far as how many recruiting trips I can take and what they can pay for? Um, information about camps and showcases. You know, so um, find out the information so you can be successful. You know, that's what we really want to practice and preach. I, I agree, man. I agree 100%. And and it and even thinking about you, thinking of what you're talking about, if an athlete is a junior or senior and they, don't, and they don't know that, it's like, what does that say about their coach? What does that say about their school counselors? And then they should even double yeah. up on doing their own due diligence, like what you're talking about. Well, and so many uh, families, and and, and to a certain extent, if if a parent and an athlete, they don't have any uh, experience with recruiting uh, and trying to get off to college, then it's hard to blame them. 
but a lot of parents and athletes, they lay everything in the hands of the coach. But yes. what we have to realize about the coach is that he has a team of 40, 50, 60 kids to worry about. He has a season to worry about where he's trying to have a good record and, and get some wins under his name. And then also a lot of them are either teachers or they have another job. They have another profession. So how much time do they really have to make sure that you have all your stuff in order and that the schools are calling you, you know? So we, it's necessary to do our due diligence. We do our due diligence when we buy a phone, a cell phone. <laughs> we do our due diligence when we, we buy a car, but we don't do our due diligence when we try to get our kids to college. I, and, and that's the biggest decision that they're making up until that point in their lives at 17, 18 years old. Yeah, and, and then they're rushing. Right. Now, before we get into the fourth quarter of our conversation, Terrence, tell people where they can find your book at, where they can learn more about Before You Go Pro and everything that you teach, your services and your products. I appreciate that, Deshaun. So, so uh, yes, we try to keep everything nice and simple for everything. So, uh, the book is, is Before You Go Pro and our company is Before You Go Pro. Um, with the book, it's easy to find. It's on, on Amazon. And then it's also on a, a website called Smashwords, uh, where you can get an ebook version. Uh, if they go to our company website, which is www.beforeyougopro.com, just like it sounds, all one word, then they can access uh, the book right there from our website. So we have the link right there. We have some snippets about what the book is about. And it's a teaching book. I like to say it's the first self-help self-growth book for athletes. I, I wrote it specifically uh, to help teach. There's chapters like blessing others while waiting for yours. That's, that's how you sit on the bench because there's a certain way uh, to go about your business when you're not the first string guy so that you do get an opportunity. Um, there's chapters in there like uh, the blessing and curse of an ego. And in that chapter, we're talking about how you're never going to be a big time football player unless you walk on that field feeling like you can be a big time football player, like you're the baddest thing on the field. But that can also be a deterrent for you if you carry that type of demeanor and that type of ego off the field. You know, when Beyonce walks on stage, she feels like she's the baddest woman on earth. But if she she acts that way and, and she's she standoffish to people when she walks off the stage, it could hurt her brand. So this is really a, a teaching book. Uh, there's another chapter I'm looking right now called Never Burn Bridges. You know, that, that small school that calls you Puget Sound uh, when you're being recruited, it might not be the school you want to go to. But if you turn off that coach because you're going to a bigger school, you hang up on them. He may be the old coordinator. He may be a scout for the New York Giants when it's your time to leave <laughs> right. the big school. And, and these coaches don't forget. They got the best memories in the world. They, they may forget their wise anniversary, but they're not forgetting the kid who uh, turned them off, you know, and uh, they'll remember that when it's time for you to try to make some money. So, so you know, there's a chapter in there called Never Burn Bridges, which is important as well. Um, but, you know, that's the book. And once again, you can go to our website and, and, and get that at, at the major retailers in ebook format or, or printed format. And then uh, as far as our company, we, we have a mentoring coaching company. Uh, we, we got started about three years ago, but right now we're coming out of, of more of a beta testing phase where we're about to start doing some marketing and, and a press release and get out there. But we already work with uh, kids across the country. It's, it's formed as a, a company that's online based and mobile based. So it's a lot of text messages, phone calls, emails, and really what it is, it's an accountability business. We right. pair you up with former players that are going to hold you accountable to your dreams. You know, yes, you tell us where you want to go. We're going to give you an evaluation. We're going to give you a blueprint. These are guys who have been there and done it. And then as long as you follow that blueprint, you're going to have some success. So with our, our business, it's actually twofold because uh, it's a content business, but it's also a coaching business. And then for those kids that need us to pick up the phone uh, to get them more exposure, it's an advocacy business. So we like to say content 
because we do books, we do blogs, we, we have an online podcast, but we also have coaching and advocacy. So um, it's a lot of moving parts, but the whole gist of it is to groom players mentally, morally, and socially. We, we don't do any on the field work. Right. Yes, sir. Before we close out, Terrence, I've been working with a school here in inner city Portland, but we have one character in particular. Since I met this kid in the summer, every seven on seven, every spring summer workout, he wears nothing but the Batman under armor, tight fitting shirt on real humble. I've known him to be a 3.5, 3.7 GPA. He's going into a senior year receiver and corner. I watched this dude last week, man, suffer like like his shoulder coming out of socket. He's in pain on the sideline, crying. The trainer physically had to restrict him from going back in the game. They were down by like five points, so we needed a touchdown. He says, coach, put me back in. Inside the 20, it's fourth down. You got You know what's coming. It's fade to the end zone. He's 5'9", yeah. three-step drop. Catches the ball, team goes ahead and wins. When you talk about intangibles, you're talking about grit, law of attraction. This is that guy. And I know those are some things that you've mentioned as far as intangibles, having grit, who to hang with, the law of attraction as an athlete, as a person or a student athlete. Tell us some more about that from your perspective. The gist of our company uh, Deshaun is that that we groom young men who happen to play football. Yes, so sir. We groom young men that happen to play football, and the reason why we want to groom young men is because um, they're tomorrow's leaders, and and we can teach through football, and we can gain opportunity through football. So you know some of the intangibles that you're talking about the grit, the hard work, the belief in yourself. Those are things that we can teach through football and that football inspires, but those are things that will make you big in life. Right. You know, those are things that, that will bring you success in life. So, you know, for that young man that, that had his shoulder pop out and, and he always brings his lunch pail when he comes to work, he's that's a kid that has the potential to be big in life. We're just going to use football to leverage more opportunity for him in life. Exactly. You know, so we 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 need you to have that that grit and that determination and that work ethic not only to survive and and football because that's what it's going to take because football does bring highs and lows but but we're going to teach you how to parlay that um into having a successful life and then as far as the the law of attraction i'm a big believer and talk to my team and my athletes all the time about the law of attraction because i i really believe that we we make our own bed so to speak right you know um the the apple that far fall far from the tree so if, if i hang out with nothing but thugs um then i'm gonna have thug type situations coming my way if i hang out with uh, student athletes, you know, here, here's an example. I went to a parochial school in San Francisco called Archbishop Reardon. The right. guys in my tight knit pies that I hung out with in, in high school, um, there was about five or six of them. Every single one of us played Division One ball. Mm -hmm. But but that was all we talked about. That was how we walked. That was. That was, you know, what we thought of, what we visualized. So lo and behold, all of us accomplished that, you know. So it's not easy, but it's not hard to have success, you know. And what I mean by that is, is the blueprint and what you have to do is pretty simple. Now, the work you have to put in behind it, that ain't simple. That's 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 hard. You got to put in some work. But But, you know, the places I need to be the people I need to be around, the things I need to say, classes I need to take, all knowing all that is easy, you know? So really it just gets down to, once again, that grit, that determination, and, and, and that hunger 
somebody has to, to be successful. If we get somebody like that, uh, sky's the limit. Definitely. Now, real quick, Terrence, we're on to the two minute offense, man. Before you go pro, what were some of your early roadblocks, failures or learning lessons? Well, well, money is always something that, <laughs> that is, you have a business uh, you have to manage and keep an eye out for and you're looking for. So, you know, um, I would just say money. Uh, we, we were successful. We had a Kickstarter campaign, which is crowdfunding. And we had some people, excuse me, back the company and back the book. So initial funding. Uh, we had to work work for, but we, we, we were end up able to get it. And then now what I would say is uh, thinking of creative ways to gain exposure with the company and then the management as we grow, managing uh, all of the athletes and the content and, and seeing seeing planting seeds for a successful fruit. Right. What was your aha moment to go further? The aha moment, great question. The aha moment was when I was working with a young man in high school. Uh, he went all the way through to prep school. Then he went to a junior college. And finally, he achieved his goal of playing Division One A football. And we got him off to, to UNLV University. He just graduated, uh, a kid by the name of Aaron Criswell. When I went to his graduation, and a pastor was speaking uh, from a church that he attends. And the pastor said that he has gotten involved in the youth group and he has extended his information to all the youth in the youth group and really started mentoring those kids and feeding into those kids lives. And this is a kid that I didn't I didn't tell him to do that. He, he felt it on his heart to do that and feed into his community. That was the aha moment where I said, wow, we got something big, something that can change communities. Incredible. Give us a success quote. A success quote. Um, matter of fact, we send out quotes every single morning uh, to our young athletes every weekday morning just to get them their foot on the right track. Um, and, and here's one from uh, it will be tomorrow's. This will be tomorrow's quote. And these are all original quotes. Um, tomorrow's quote is pick up your work ethic so you can pre-order your blessing. Nice. Now I got a quote from your book, and this is one that I consider quotes on preparation. You said, in quote, I will have constant practice outside of regular team practice and endless mental preparation about the game of football. Dad and I never casually watched football games. We studied them. Yep. And, and that gets back to becoming who you want to be. So when you're becoming who you want to be, if it's a, a major big time football player, um, you take every little minute, every little advantage you can to get better. And, and yes, my dad's a former player and, and he and I come from a family of players. So if, if the guys are sitting down watching the game, uh, we're critiquing. You know, uh, it, it almost gets hard to turn it off and watch it as a fan. But that gets right. back to uh, <clears throat> that gets back to the mastery of your craft. I'm a big believer that uh, if you want to make it to the top, you got to get in the two percentile of whatever you do. The top three to two percent of whatever you do. You're not going to get in that top three to two percent unless you master your craft. So take advantage of every minute you've got. Nice. And then this one, this last one is a quote on the recruiting process. If you change your perspective from being one of the inexperienced novice to that of a knowledgeable, well-read and business minded athlete, your chances of success are greatly increased because you are making informed decisions. Definitely. So, you know, I, I brought up the fact that college coaches, these big time college coaches, they look for opportunity, they look for movement, they look for upward growth in their career. If I'm uh, coaching at San Diego State and I have a chance to now be the coach at UCLA, I'm going to do all my due diligence to find out what it's going to be like for me to take that job. Who's going to, who's the support there? You know, what type of resources are available? I'm going to make a business decision to change my school and go coach now at UCLA. It's the same thing 
for these these recruit these recruits you know especially if you're a young man that's blessed to have multiple options you owe it to yourself to become a business athlete and a business athlete is somebody that knows their business that they're doing their due diligence they're finding out all the little p's and q's that go on at the university all of the networks that will be available to them at the, the university um you know what type of majors are going on what was the social life like they're finding out everything they can so that they can make a wise business decision if you're not making if you're not doing all of those things good luck <laughs> Coaches is finally here. A workbook for athletes designed by athletes. Something that's going to help you help your student athlete develop their leadership skills. Something that's going to help you help your student athlete develop character development. Along with that, we have chapters that's going to help the student athlete define and overcome fear. It isn't for the student athlete to do by themselves. It's for the parent to assist the student athlete. It's for the coach to assist the student athlete and bridge the gap in communication. To learn more, visit sportsmastery.com slash by workbook. If you have any personal questions, drop me an email, drop me a line at Deshaun, D-E-S-H-A-W-N at sportsmastery.com. Peace and blessings.